beer o'clock and it's hot as hell in London. It's the beer o'clock show. My name is Mark, your friendly beer noob, and joining me to teach me all about the mighty real ale from a paddling pool in the shade somewhere in Essex is my beer mentor, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Mark. Are you enjoying the weather? <laughs> It's hot here too. Yeah, um, it is hot. Uh, ironically enough, we do have the pool up in the garden, um, <laughs> so it it has been um, getting its use the last couple of days. That's right. for sure. I can just imagine you sitting in it during the day with your laptop on your knee, just <laughs> just, just wallowing, yeah, <laughs> with, with a pint in hand, beer hat on. Yep. No, unfortunately, it's um it's overcrowded with with the kids. <laughs> it's it's their plaything during the day. Oh, how selfish. Oh no, how dare they? <laughs> <laughs> this week, because it's nice and summery, we're going to be reviewing a beer that is a personal favourite of mine, and a really nice summer beer, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First of all, any beery news this week, Steve? Yes, I've got a few bits again. Um, for, first one up was, a uh, few, few of our listeners probably picked this up last week, um, New Thing launched last Thursday called Urban Sessions mm -hmm. in, in Hackney. Um, basically a uh, four month beer residency type thing in a in a hot old swimming pool in Hackney um, over the next four months they're going to be featuring 500 different beers uh, at urban sessions um, and there's going to be DJs and live bands and, and all sorts of things going on there um, so if, if you want to check that out um, I, I think it's uh, urbansessions.co.uk or search for urban sessions on the the internet but um, that's that's probably the big thing that, that, that happened last week um, it was the European Beer Bloggers Festival at the weekend up in Edinburgh. Um, so Twitter was alive with what was going on at the European Beer Bloggers Festival. Um, but, well, we weren't there, so we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Moving on. Um, also, Magic Rock launched their next uh, limited edition beer last week. Uh, who, who Auburn are these Barrel. You've been talking about what, Magic what? Rock a lot. Magic Rock. Um, they are a brewery in Huddersfield, okay. Um, and they they do um, quite a nice range of beers. I've had quite a few of their beers recently. Okay. Um, they the, they're the guys behind the beer that we're going to be doing next week, the Unhuman Cannonball. Okay. Um, but they've they've just released re launched this week their Bourbon Bearded Barrel Bourbon. No, hang on, Bourbon Barrel Bearded Lady. Um, <laughs> Which is a tenish percent brown stout right. um, that has been matured for ten months in bourbon barrels, um, six sixty mil bottle. The, the the cap is sealed with wax as well. It's such an exciting bottle of beer, um, and I I I. I Having almost missed the whole unhuman cannibal thing, I was there when this was launched last Thursday. Um, I was on hours by mail. When I got on there, there were 50 bottles left, and they were going rapidly. Um, mine turned up today. It's a beautiful-looking bottle of beer, um, but that's been squirreled away for Christmas. I'm, I'm going to enjoy <laughs> that one at Christmas. That's definitely a Christmas beer. Um, and then just the other thing, just um, not really news, but just a bit of a follow-up from last week. Um, we were talking about the Crouch Val Black beer last week um, which was my pick of the week and and that actually launched a bit of a bit of a to and fro in on Twitter on I think it was on Friday um, by all accounts I, I didn't realize it was a limited edition run of, of only 500 bottles and there were only nine bottles left in Essex and they were being delivered to an off license that was three miles down the road from me. So um, I, I got in touch with the off license and they, they put a couple aside for me. So I don't think they're on Twitter, um, but I'm going to just give a shout out to Kelverdon Beers and Spirits. Um, or is it Wines and Spirits? I don't know. It's the only off license in Kelverdon. But if, if anybody wants Crouch Val Black, they've still got a couple of bottles left. Um, they don't do mail order. I'm not getting any bottles for anyone, so you're literally <laughs> going to have to find your way there. Uh, I think Crouch Valve said they may think about doing another run of it this this autumn, but it but it certainly won't be out before Christmas. So um, that's this week's news. Wow. <laughs> Very good, a featured pack news week for once. I know, two weeks in a row. It's like <laughs> I've actually been doing some research. 
So uh, let's get on to what we've drunk in the last week. And I've actually had something to drink since the last <laughs> show. Amazing, I know. And this was a beer from the Colonel Brewery, which was their India Pale Ale Simcoe. Ooh. Have you had that before? I think that's one I had. That's I'm the not, one I checked in anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure. It, it seems as though everything they do is an India Pale Ale. Yeah, with a little um, funny name on the end. Yeah, and there's about 3,000 variations of it on mm-hmm. Untapped. So I'm assuming I'll tap the right one in because I got bored looking and it looked like the right one. <laughs> oh, that'll um, do. <laughs> so that'll be, that was really strong. Not really my taste, just because of how strong it was. Really beer fruity, hoppy, the kind of thing you would expect from an IPA. I haven't used beer fruit in a while. That time no, that it's, back. it has been a while, hasn't but it? That, that's the first time I've actually tasted beer fruit in a while. So it, it was all right, you know, quality beer as you would expect from the Colonel. How about you, mate? What have you they, had are good, they are good beers, Colonel yeah. beers. Um, yeah, hold on to your hat. Here we go again. It's been quite the beery <laughs> week. Um, Magic Rock again. Done a couple of Magic Rocks. Done done High Wire. Um, last week I was talking about how I had done the the High Wire with the either the Australian or the New Zealand hops. One of them. I, I did the the original High Wire um, this week. Um, just again, just it was, it's. Uh, I think it was what they call a, an, an American Pale Ale, um, but just just really really just hoppy and just refreshing and citrusy everything you want from that that sort of style of beer um i also did a curious as well which I, which i've done before um i did a kernel as as well this week i did their double citra ipa um which weighed in at a hefty 9.7 percent um and was absolutely lovely um really really felt like i'd been smacked in the face with a fistful of citrus hops drinking that um so that was quite quite tasty. Uh, I did a spin drift by Adnams because I found myself in the Adnams shop um, on a hot day and they had some in the fridge so I thought I'll have one of those, took that. Um, did an AAPA by the, the Rocky Head Brewery uh, which is an Anglo-American parallel. That, that was okay. Um, Reverend and the Makers by Thornbridge again. Now I tried that a couple of weeks ago on, on keg at the Houston Tap. This was out of the bottle. It was awful compared to, to the keg it was weak it was tasteless it was just it was everything the keg wasn't oh dear. Um, so I wouldn't recommend uh, Reverend and, and the makers um, I did a Shoreditch Triangle IPA by London Fields I did a Citra by Crouch Vow um, picked one of those up while I was picking up a couple of bottles of black and then I did a Brick Lane Lager by Red Church and that is my pick of the week this wow. week. It was a close thing this week between the Crouch Vale Citra and, and the, the Brick Lane Lager. But for yeah. me, the, the Brick Lane Lager was really what I think lager should taste like. Mm-hmm. Um, having now moved as far away from lager as you can get, it, it smelled like proper craft beer. But it had the crispiness, the refreshingness of a lager, lovely citrusy hit, really refreshing, and lovely bittersweet aftertaste. So this week's pick of the week, Red Church Brick Lane Lager. And I had a, Brit- a Red Church beer um, a couple of weeks ago, the Bethnal Pale Ale, which was really nice. Yeah, they, 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 it, it seems as though they, they, they do a good range of beers. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's get on to this week's featured beer then, if you don't have anything else to mention, mate. Well, I've got some other bits to mention, but we'll throw them in while we're drinking the beer. Okay, then. Cool. I don't mean to skip ahead, but I'm quite think... keen to get into this beer because I'm thirsty. Yeah, it's it's perfect summer's <laughs> day today. Let's let's get quaffing. This is a supermarket staple and one that I've mentioned quite a few times, especially in Season 1 when I first discovered it. It is The Golden Glory by Badgers. Now, stop rolling your eyes, folks. This is actually quite a nice beer. It's their peachy one. So expect many repeats of the word peachy in the following review. <laughs> but it's it's a hot summer's day. This would, I remember the first time I had this, I was editing this show in season one and it was a hot summer's day. And I had this, not having read the label, not expecting the peachiness. And I was blown away by how peachy it was. See, peachy, peachy, peachy. So let's get into it. <laughs> oh, it's honestly, you crack the top and it, it's straight away. All you're getting is peach off of it. Yep. So you get an initial hit of malt, and then it's and then it's all peach. Mhm. It's lovely. But I'm not biased at all. 
Let's do an unbiased review. <laughs> Pour it out. Well, y you know, let's let's go back to previous reviews. Where, what have been absolute unadulterated favourites of mine. I, I've I've been completely unbiased. Um, thinking back particularly to the time where we reviewed Ghost Ship and I loved it so much I had to crack open a second can <laughs> to, to marvel at how wondrous it was. <laughs> so we're allowed to have a favourite every now and again. Indeed. So, um... That's a lovely pour. Yeah. Now, you've had this before, well, you? can't you? see that. Yeah, um, yes, once. I've got a nice big thick head on mine, as one does. Yeah, I've got about half a finger's worth of head. Mine's a couple of fingers. Again, that nice, fresh, peachy nose oh. coming off the top of it. Now, I'm wondering, because the the bottle doesn't really tell you too much, how do they get the the, the, the peach aroma? Do, do they actually use peaches in the brewing, or is it the combination of other ingredients they use that give it that peachy flavour? Well, let's have a look, because I have their website up. Because I'd really like to know um, that. Let's see what's in it. Um, hmm. Perhaps not. I have to wonder. You would think, as a food stuff, beer should have an ingredients list on the back. Well, <laughs> contains malted barley and sulfites. Huh. Well, I don't know. They must put some okay. flavors in there or something. Maybe, maybe someone can tweet us and tell us. Um, are there peaches in it? <laughs> you, you know, I'd like to know these things. C clearly, we've um, again, once again, done our research and doing our <laughs> listeners proud. <laughs> this is apparently, according to my back of the label research, an ideal complement to sticky barbecue ribs or an indulgent vanilla cheesecake. Two of my favourite things. Nice, and of which you've got neither this evening. I have neither. So I'll, I'll imagine that I'm eating some ribs and cheesecake while I partake in my Bad Day's Golden Glory. So, getting a nose on it. Nice and fresh. Absolutely. It's it's all peach. Yeah. So shall we... Yeah. It was quite fizzy coming out of the bottle, but it's settled right down now. It's, it's died down now, yeah. 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 Let's crack on. Cheers, pal. Cheers, buddy. Well, that's half a bottle gone. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if Not you were going to stop. Yeah, I was, I was. I was. I was sitting here watching you go, and I was like, "Mark's a thirsty boy tonight." I love Guys, it. are you in for a treat tonight? Let the roller coaster Woo! commence. <laughs> Rock and roll. Um, the the peach flavors don't carry through, do they? Instantly. No, that's one thing I've found. There's a little bit of peachiness in there. Yeah. Every time I've had a bottle of this. The amount of peachiness comes through changes. So if you remember, the first time I had it, it was like drinking peaches. <laughs> and the next time I had it, I could hardly taste the peaches at all. Now, the peaches are okay on this one. It might just depend on what the I weather's don't... like. I don't know. I wonder if it's a bit like, because I, I don't know if you've picked this up. Uh, something that I've picked up on Twitter is the last few weeks is, is there seems to be a lot of... Um, to in and throwing over the Brewdog beers, particularly their their, their staple beer, the Punk IPA, mm -hmm. and and it seems to depend on which batch number is on the bottle, that depends on how good the beer is, and there are certain batches that are better than other batches. Okay. And and I'm wondering whether that's that's the same maybe with all beers is is that that they will only produce a that they can only produce a set certain amount of fluid at any one time. So is it that the ingredients change slightly or something changes slightly to give every beer a different profile? Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Um, as for mm. this, let's try and... Well, I don't have much left, but I'll just see if I can get some taste out of it. <laughs> I'll carry it. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Sorry, I started and then went, oh, this has got to come. I don't want to stop, but I ran out of breath, so I had to. Okay. It's quite malty, quite biscuity in the background. Um, there is that dominant peach flavour coming mm. through. It's not overpowering. It lingers a little bit. It leaves a lovely fresh aftertaste. No bitterness whatsoever. Review done. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> very slight spice from the hops. 
like you said, there's a, there's a faint maltiness there. Peachiness coming through. And considering that I've just done half a bottle in one mouthful, it's it's a very easy drink. It's it's, a, it's an exceptionally easy drink. Four point five percent. Couple of hours in the fridge on a nice hot summer's day like this, you're laughing. You're mm -hmm. absolutely laughing with a badger. Yeah, no. And we all love a badger. We we do <laughs> all love a badger's owl. <laughs> Depending on the badgers, they're damp. Someone and the ginger one. Oh no. Apart from those two. Yeah. Which which were horrendous. <laughs> Um, but we we all love we all love a decent badger. Their ginger one was the first beer I ever poured out. Really? Yeah. Because I sat down with it, excited. You know, I like a ginger beer. No, but that was beer with ginger in it. Yeah. Which is not too much. A ginger beer. Yeah. Which which one's that? Is that the oh what's it called? That is the. Um, I was talking to someone on Reddit about it just the other day. Oh. I'm sure it'll come to us. You, you'll search for it and find it. Yeah. Um, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll jump in with, a, with with one of my little anecdotes for this week. Okay. Um, la last week's beer, we were um, trying to decipher the website, and and it appears that th this caused quite some discussion between a few of our followers on on Twitter. There was some suggestion that it was Italian. Um, Latin, um, and then it was clarified at the weekend for us by number three fan, Denton Raider, um, confirmed for us that it was actually Catalan, not mm -hmm. Spanish. Um, it was in the Catalan dialect, and apparently, um, Menorcan folk are direct descendants of the Catalan people. So, um, didn't help us because still didn't translate the <laughs> website, but it's nice to know that it's Catalan, not Spanish, for yeah. anybody that still cares out there. I managed to type some of the bits out except for the funny letters into Google Translate and um, apparently the, they're a company that makes a beer. So. That's shock! <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that's, well that's brilliant. There you go. <laughs> Blanford yeah. Fart Flyer is the ginger yes. badgers that we See, don't you know like. what? I've had that, and I didn't think it was too bad. It was cer certainly wasn't as bad as the, um, as, uh, the, the damson evil thing that we, that we did last season yeah i think it was for me it was down to expectations i was expecting a ginger ale ginger beer type drink i don't know if that's what you call them over here but you know like a finzy ginger ale yeah but that was a beer flavored what like ginger the root and no thank you whereas their damps and express or whatever the hell their plum beer is yeah no no no, no. no. not ever not ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> Even if I get given it for Christmas, nah. It's, nah. it's getting passed on to you or something. <laughs> Happy birthday. It will just keep circulating. Give it to number one fan. Yeah, I'm See sure he still loves it. us. He'll drink anything, will he? <laughs> we, we tell him to. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um, <laughs> this beer, I was looking... We haven't spoken about rape beer in a while. We, last season we used to bring rape beer up quite a bit. Because um, we're better than that now. Because <laughs> we're better than that Because we have our own opinions now and we don't have to leech off of others. Yeah. But just... Because I just did a, a Google, because it's worth a Google, for Badger Golden Glory, and rape beer came up, so I thought I'd have a, I'd have a look. And this is a beer that really splits opinion right down the middle. You've got some giving it, like, Six, seven out of twenty, and others giving it nineteen out of twenty. Um, That's quite a scale to write on, rate on, isn't it? Out of it twenty. Is. Yeah. Well, they have different, like, have aroma, appearance, taste, and palate. Ah, uh, um, okay. Some are out of five, some are out of ten, but then they have an overall score. Um, but it's amazing. Just, I mean, it's not like any are in the middle. It's all way at either end of the scale. It's weird. Well, I shouldn't say it's weird because, you know, if you get the beer snobs on rape beer who want the nicely crafted bitters, what are you giving me a funny look for? I'm not, I'm just, um, <laughs> I've just, I've just belched and I, I didn't enjoy the aftertaste <laughs> that, that, that came w with it. Oh um, dear. I, yeah. It's I, sickly. I, it has got a little bit sickly now. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit too sweet yeah. for, for me. I, I think it's a little bit too sweet, a little bit too sticky. 
um, not enjoying the aroma now either. The peaches have given way to mouldy peach or, or something. Uh-oh. Maybe this is one of the beers that you're supposed to skull in one go, just to get it out of the way and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. It's a five-seconder. The first five I'm, seconds are amazing. I'm picking up more bitterness <laughs> now as well, as it as mm-hmm. it's warming. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't think I'm enjoying it. That's that's for sure. I, I enjoyed the first swig, yeah, first good guzzle of it. Um, but you know, you could put that down to the heat and the, the fact that. Needed to quench the thirst yeah. on, on such a hot day, but now as it's as it's as it's going, it's it's getting a bit more difficult. Yeah, to, to be completely honest, when now that I'm sitting here studying it, like I said, it's a five second the first five seconds when you're taking that first big gulp, it's a beautiful beer. Mm. But if you're gonna sit here and study it, you soon learn that it, it's just a peachy beer. I'm not enjoying that anymore. I'm I'm not the the aroma's making me feel sick every time I, I take a swig of it because all I'm getting is peach. I'm getting so, so I'm trying to drink it, but I'm trying to avoid the smell at the same time, which is impossible, <laughs> clearly. Um, th- th- that aroma of peach is just getting too much. If, if when I do manage to get some into my mouth, it's it's just a mixture of bitty, bitter, sticky, sweet peachness. Uh, um, <laughs> No, not not enjoying that now. Okay, no. so let's wind up our review because I think, for me, I still really like this beer, but it's not one that you should pay too much attention to while you're drinking it. Just get it out of the way, really. It's a good summer beer. You you want it when you're doing something else and it's hot. When you stood over a barbecue sweating like a pig. Yeah would be the time to neck one of these because you wouldn't even you wouldn't even it wouldn't touch the sides. Yeah, it's not a beer to sit down and study with your mate over the internet. N- no, you'll no, soon, it's... You'll, you'll soon find out it comes up short compared to many other beers that you try. I find it a very enjoyable beer, but not now that I'm sitting here actually talking about it. <laughs> but it's a it's for me it's a tasteful shallow beer, and that's really yes. all I can say about it. But if if we go back to what we originally set out to do when we started on our little podcast venture here. Mm-hmm. It, it was to do the beers that you can get in the supermarkets that, that people can get and they the, the idea was that they could get one on a Friday night and sit down and drink it while we're drinking it and that they could, you know, sample what we're sampling. Yeah. We've veered away from that a little bit by going to some extreme beers and it's good to come back to our roots, I think. Mm-hmm. And I can't stop belching <laughs> now, and all I'm getting is stale peach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the look on your face sums it up. You're not going much over a three on this one, are you, mate? I don't even know whether I'm going to a three on it. Um, <laughs> I think I'd give it a three for that initial refreshing fruity hit. Yeah. But then it's it's not a long it's not a long term beer is it it's no. it's all over in those first couple of swallows for me that first 5 seconds is a 4 out of 5 the next half hour trying to finish the next half tonight yeah no <laughs> that's going down like a one and a half uh, yeah absolutely but again, that's just because we're talking about it you know normally i would have finished it by now <laughs> that is fair enough you know <laughs> Well, i wouldn't be thinking about it while i drink it anyway well, no, there are some, but there are some beers that you don't need to think about while you drink. Yeah. Some some beers are just there to be drunk, to to help to ease the pain. Yeah, but but in all fairness to this beer, if you're looking for a nice, refreshing, easy session beer, and you not don't mind the sweet sweeter ones, give this one a go. It'll be in your local Sainsbury's, your Tesco's, wherever. They're gonna stock it everywhere. Well, apparently not. Apparently, apparently they're not stocking it in Scotland. Oh, really? <laughs> number two fan was desperately trying to get hold of a bottle, and he's been everywhere, and he can't find it anywhere. <laughs> oh, sorry, Doody. <laughs> Hope you find one before Friday, mate, before you hear this. Yeah. Oh, poor Doody. Yeah. <laughs> Talking Doody's of which... His coming out this week. Well, no, by the time people hear this... It would have been out. It would have been out. <laughs> but next week's blog... There'll be another one that he'll be doing for next week. Um, he's, he's, he's keeping us on ten hooks at the moment as to which one he's going to do. It's it's either going to be um, his adventures with, uh, with with weather spoons, which 
I've previously read and it's it's quite amusing. Okay. Um, uh, or it's going to be his visit to the um, Scottish Real Ale Festival th- this past weekend. Um, either way, whichever one doesn't come out next week will appear in the future in, anyway. <laughs> so just keep an eye out for, for Still Thinking, um, which will be out next Tuesday at Beer O'Clock. Cool. I'm looking forward to reading it. I've not read the first one yet. It's going to be a surprise for me as well. It, yeah, but by the time this is out on Friday, you may have read it. You never know. You never know. It's weird. <laughs> this, oh, there's the a part. whole time travel thing going on here that's just... <laughs> when, when you listen back to this on Friday, you're going to be like, hang on, what are we doing there? We're talking about the past, but the future in yeah. the past. For those yeah, who, let's stop. For those who are new to internet radio, we don't record this live. No, no. It's done on a Monday. <laughs> You're not listening to it as we do it. Um, so it's recorded on the Monday, and then it's edited and put up on the Friday. Yeah. So. Although one day we might try and do it live. <laughs> God help us, and God help whoever tunes in. Yeah. Uh, right, let's wrap this up. But before we do... Okay. We've got a few more bits. Um, well, no, I'll, I'll, sorry, oh, I was yeah. going to give another... I, I don't think I need to give any more of my views about the beer. <laughs> it's... Uh, all I was going to do is just challenge challenge what you said in terms of it being a session beer, because because I I don't think I could manage more than one of those in a session <laughs> before it got too sickly. Um, if you don't mind the taste, and, it's a and I'm just beer. wondering. Okay, that's okay. That's fair enough. We'll leave it at that. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's a great thing about beer, isn't it? Yeah. Two people will drink the same beer and have completely different opinion on oh, it. Yeah. So we've, we've, let's let's not argue too much about that. Many that times over the last season. Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Do you have a few more news bits before we hang up? Um, no, no. I just um need to talk about next week's show, um, and we need to talk about the little clip that's coming up as well. Um, so okay. whichever one you want to do first. Let's talk about next week's show. Well, okay. End of season special. We next week. End of season two. Woo! Um, we we mentioned it last week. We are going to be joined by number one fan at Stath seventy nine, number two fan H underscore Doody. Um, it's going to be four of us reviewing next week, which which could be fun. Um, and we are all going to be doing Magic Rocks Unhuman Cannonball. And I'll be doing twelve percent whenever triple Doody talks. IPA. <laughs> God knows what you'll be doing by the end of a 12%. If you attack it like you attack the Golden Glory tonight, mate, you'll be on your ass within 20 seconds. Um, so I, I just thought in, in preparation for the fact that we know we're, we're doing Unhuman Cannonball next week, we'll, we'll also have a bit of a look back over the season and, and like we did at the end of season one, we'll, we'll talk about what our favourite beers have been. Da, 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 da. Um, just, just putting a request out, if, if, if anybody out there has already sampled Unhuman Cannonball, let us know what you think of it. Um, mm-hmm. Because, I, 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 again, I'm wondering whether it's going to be one of these beers that's going to split opinions right down the middle. Um, so, uh, yeah, look out for that one next week, end of season special. And and then we're taking a, a wee break, as I would say. Um, a wee break. For a couple of weeks, anyway. And yeah, there we are, that's <laughs> it. I, I tried to break into a little Scottish accent there, but I just haven't got it in me. <laughs> So, so yeah, that's that's that. That's next week, um, and then we've got. Um, look, you can talk about this. Um, <laughs> Silence. <laughs> we've got a little clip at the end of the show from Vic Norman, and that's why we don't do it live. Yeah. <laughs> a little clip at the end of the show. Yeah, and why have we got that clip? I'm getting to that. <laughs> we've got a bit, a bit of delay going on now. We're getting confused with each other. Oh, have we? Yeah. Oh, I can hear you fine. Um, so we've got a clip at the end of the show with Steve going to be talking to Vic Norman. Vic Norman runs the Dragon and Flagon pub tours, their pub walking tours. We've been on one together before last year. Steve's been on another one earlier this year. And we have a beer o'clock live event, which is basically a Dragon and Flagon walking tour that Steve and I are going to be at. We've got quite a few listeners coming along. There are still spots available. Um... And it's at, what's the address to, to book your place on it, mate? Because you can book your place now, and then you can pay 
in a little bit. I think it's beer o'clock show live dot eventbrite dot com or something like that. It's, it's something like that. Check yeah. the website. We'll put the link up on the website. Also, well, I'll, I'll make sure that. <laughs> oh no, um, you're gonna have to edit this bit out. I'll, I'll make sure that when I talk to Vic tomorrow, that I finish the the interview with the website address. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can cut this bit out, and and you can. You can merge that bit in. We're so as, professional. As though it was always supposed to be. And, and you can add this bit to our, our bloopers show that will be coming at some point in the in, in the very far future. Oh, God. Yeah, so, so edit, edit this bit. <laughs> so stay tuned after a little bit of music for Steve's interview with Vic Norman. We'll be talking about, he'll, or they will be talking about the upcoming um, walking tour, the Dragon and Flagon tours. Um, and that it. It's the end of the show. Oh. You can find us on the web at beeroclockshow.co.uk. You can email us at beeroclockshow at gmail.com and twitter.com slash beeroclockshow where you'll get all the beery news and retweets and all the other fun little show-related bits and pieces from Steve as he tweets like a demon about beer. Right. <laughs> Until next week, the big season finale with the beer that's going to kill four of us in one foul swoop. My name is Mark. Thank you, yes, Steve, indeed. as always. You're welcome, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Until next week, cheers. Bye bye. It's Beer O'Clock and this is Steve from the Beer O'Clock Show and I'm here with Vic Norman from Dragon and Flag and Pub Tours. Hi Vic. Hello, good to be here. Good to see you again Vic. Um, hope you're well. Um, you've heard us talk about Vic before on the show and those avid loyal listeners will remember back to season one when we did a tour with, with Vic um, and spoke to him about what he does but we've obviously got a live event coming up in sep September what we're hosting with, with Vic and Vic's going to be running for us but more about that later um, but I thought it'd be a great opportunity to have a catch up with Vic and talk about the tours how they're going what's in the pipeline for the future and, and that sort of thing if that's okay with, with you great. Sure. excellent okay so um, Vic for those people that, that didn't hear the show in season one Tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. Right, well, I, I run a series of seven different historical pub tours of London. Uh, each one's in a different area of central London. Each one will take in five or six different pubs, and all the pubs have been chosen because they're a kind of perfect example of the type of English pub, type of London pub through the centuries. Uh, and I weave together kind of, um, a historical route, talk a little bit about the history, uh, introduce the pubs, give beer recommendations, a bit of comedy, and occasionally some pork scratchings. That's brilliant. And we all yes. love a pork scratching with we do, our beer, we do. don't we? Yeah, there's some great pork scratchings in London. Best, best pork scratchings in London? Best pork scratchings are on the Strand and Goblet tour. Ooh, uh, I've done and that one. In, uh, and you're on the live event, so yes. there's, a, there's an incentive to come along for the live event. Um, they make their own pork scratching, so they take the whole skin and, and they roast it off themselves and chop it up and, and homemade apple sauce. It's, it's, it's dreamy. It's and and that's, that's on the tour that we're doing with That you. is on the tour, pub number five. Brilliant. They're, they're, as, as you say, there you go, there's another incentive to come so on. The, yeah, come if on nothing a tour. else, come for yeah, the pork scratching. The best pork scratchings in London. Um, so, you, you say you've got seven different tours. Yeah. Um, just give us, I know you don't like to reveal too much about your, your, your tours before people actually go on them, but just give us a little bit of a flavour about the sorts of areas that they might take in in, in London. Okay, so um, the Dragon and Flagon, which is my original tour, goes around um, Legal London, Fleet Street, Chancery Lane, Hoban, Blackfriars, St Paul's. I've got one called the Suit and Flute, which is around the financial district, where we are right now. I've one, got one called the Taylor Three Bridges, which runs from St Paul's to Tower via Bankside and Borough. I've got another one that runs around Clerkenwell and Smithfield. Another one runs around Hoban. Um, the Strand and Goblet, which is the live event, runs from Temple all the way through to Charing Cross. And then my new tour, which launches in August, 
um, goes around Covent Garden, Chinatown, next to uh, Soho and Oxford Circus. Okay, so you, you mentioned you've got uh, a new tour launching in August. Um, is this the first new tour that you've launched in, in a while? Or? Yeah, the Strand and Goblet was the last new tour, and that launched um, autumn 2012. Okay, so this one, the new tour, the Stripper and Schooner, because um, it goes through Soho, um, is launching August the 2nd. So it's been a while between tours, but um, yeah. And you, you, we, because we were chatting be, before um, we started recording, and you, you mentioned that um, your, your new tour sold out within what was it about? It's about three quarters of an hour. Brilliant. Yeah. Matched only by the likes of Take That and One Direction when they play Wembley. Um, I hate to be lumped together in the same sense as, as them, but um, as an analogy, it stinks. But okay, I'll, I'll yeah. go with it. But you must be fairly <laughs> pleased that, that that your tours are gaining recognition to the point where they're selling out that that quickly. Yeah, uh, I'm sold. I'm sold out quite quickly with a, a lot of tours. I always knew the new tour because there were so many people who'd been on a lot of the other tours, and they kept on asking me. When's this new tour coming? And I say, well, it's going to come sometime summer 2013. So they've been hanging on for it. And as soon as I kind of mention it on Twitter and Facebook, um, all those people kind of snap the places up straight away. So, so it's sold out. But I've got I'm running it again in the end of August. So okay, people want to do it. It's, and it's there. How, how do people find out about your your tours and what you're doing and how that and how do they book on it? Where, how how do people find out about? Dragon and Flagon tours. Yeah, and lots of different ways. If you've been on tour before, you might be following me on Twitter, Dragon and Flagon, or on my Facebook group, The Dragon and Flagon. Uh, or you might be receiving an email newsletter once a month because you get given me your email. Or you've been through my website, which is www.londonpubtours.weebly.com. Or you might have just searched for it on Google, London Pub Tours. And um, right at the top of Google, you type in London Pub Tours, it's, uh, it's uh, my website. Okay. And in terms of booking, how, uh, how do people book their places on, on the tours? They, they'll contact me and um, ask me for a place, and then they, it's £10 a head for any tour, and they, they pay up front. They pay pal, check, mm -hmm. uh, EFT, so electronic funds transfer. Um, yeah, it's quite easy. Okay. Um, so we're, we're sitting now in, I think you mentioned this, this a while ago, we're, we're sitting in a, in, a, in a pub that features on one of your tours. Yeah. Do you want to just give us a little bit of, of background about this pub, just as a little bit of a teaser for people that yeah, might want to do this tour? And sure. We're, we're currently sitting upstairs in pub number one on what is the Suit and Flute Tour. Suit and Flute Tour is the tour of the financial district. We begin, at, begin and end at Liverpool Street and go around, go around the city of London. Um, this pub opened as a bank in 1893, Prescott's Bank. Um, and it's, it hasn't really changed that much. Well, no, they've got the bar in the middle, but it's, the, it's a beautiful dome right in the centre of the, of the pub. It's very high ceiling. Um, the private restaurants in the back used to be the managers, the assistant managers' offices. The, the basement, the foundations here are the same foundations as the 2,000-year-old Roman Basilica and Forum, which lies underneath us right, right now, we're on, where, where the core market used to be. Okay. So that's this pub, pub number one, five, on the city of Okay. So, so that, that, that'll give our listeners a bit of a taste as to what they can expect from one, one of your tours. Yeah, I hope um, so. I've personally done two of your tours, and I've, yeah. I've enjoyed both of them thoroughly. Um, and, and that's how I think we came about approaching you to, to be part of our first live event, which yeah. we're, we're running on um, Saturday the 14th of September. Yep. Um, we're doing the Strand and... Got tour. tour with yeah. you. Um, places on on that can be booked via uh, a specific event link, which I'll which I'll give you at the end. Um, Nine pound a head. But Vic, apart from the best pork scratchings in London, yes. What else can can people expect from your side of things of, of our live event? So that's not enough then to draw you in. I think I think that what, what? best pork scratchings in yeah, London. Yeah, not you want more than that. I, 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 right. think, I think let's give, a, let's give, give people a flavour of, of what they're flavor. paying for. Yeah. A more well-rounded account yeah. then. Okay, well, um, for those of you who are interested in London history, London's full of kind of oddities and peculiarities, and the Strand and Goblet Tour um, is full of those. We'll go down a private road that technically can be considered a county. It's an enclave in London. Enclaves are little parts of London, sometimes roads, sometimes areas, that are technically or legally, historically, not actually part of London, or can be considered separate. Um, 
we will also talk about the Quick Red Ceremony, which is the second oldest ceremony in the country. Um, we will go to the only road in the country where you must drive on the right-hand side. We will go to the exact centre of London, and most people don't know where that is. Um, there's some of the historical things that we'll talk about, the oddities and peculiarities about London. Pub-wise, pub -wise, we'll go to an 18th century coffee house turned pub, which is uh, pub number one. We'll go to what looks like a kind of ornate railway station waiting room uh, from the 1920s, which is which is a pub that used to be uh, when you used to go and watch a, um, a play at one of the theatres, you would exit and you would come through this very pub. Um, so that's that's pub number two. Uh, we'll go to a stunning gin palace, uh, and we'll finish at the only pub that's on two. The only pub in two halves, so half of the pub is on one side of the road, the other half is on the other side of the road. That is the pub with the uh, great wall structures. Ah, fantastic. And I was particularly blown away by that pub when I, when I did this tour with you last time. It's just out, you turn that corner and it's just, it's just like a, it's, it's a, it's a heavenly treasure. It's, it was amazing. It, yeah. it, was, it was absolutely amazing. And, and if, that's, if that's not enough for you, folks, obviously you also get the, the pleasure of Mark and, Mark and I's company as well for, for, for the afternoon um, as we sample various owls uh, around London and, and talk about those. And, and for those of you that want to get your voice on, on the podcast, we, we, we'll be doing a few recordings as well as, as to what you think of the beers. Um, so, so Vic, that's 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 our live tour. I yep. think I've probably got one more question to ask you. Okay. Um, I've got an idea of what the answer might be. Actually, what's your favourite beer? What's what's if if you oh. there, there's been a lot of lot of chat recently about um, if if it, if you could choose the last beer that that you ever drank, or if you had to take a beer to a desert island with you, what would it be? What what would yours be? Desert Vic? island beer. Desert island beers. Yes. I think I'm torn, really, and it changes whenever I discover a new fantastic real ale. But um, I'm quite keen on Samuel Smith's chocolate stout. I'm quite keen on Samuel Smith's Taddy Porter. Uh, a lot of people knock Samuel Smith, but um, they shouldn't really because their bottle beers are second to none. Um, what I'm really fond recently of Bateman's Mocha or Mocha I'm not sure how to pronounce that it's, it's kind of a co yeah. coffee chocolate I've, I've had thing that. of beauty and absolutely stunning find there just wonderful yeah um, but yeah I don't know if I can kind of stick to it I think you have to kind of have a top five desert island beers okay I think it should be a regular slot your top five desert, top, yeah, top five beers top five beers yeah. you have if you were going to die that day yeah, yeah. and you could pre-select yeah because one is just not enough is it no yeah. well, it's not no you need a range no. and if you if you're going to be executed for any reason yeah if you knew you were on your way out you'd, you'd want to you'd want to be happy i wanted to sample a wheat beer certainly if i was going to die i think i'd start with a wheat beer okay and i'd move i'd move through through golden towards dark and then, as it became darker and darker, thus my life would expire. I think that would be poetic. It certainly sounds it, yeah. And, and also, just, just give us your thoughts as well, because this week on the show we reviewed um, Badger's Golden Glory, yes. which I know is a, is a staple beer of yours. It is. Give, give us your thoughts on the Golden Glory as well. What do you um, think Well, we were talking a little bit about uh, Golden Glory earlier, earlier and um, I think it's a gateway ale. OK, explain what you mean by that. Well, I mean, it's like... Um, a bangers and mash beer. Like, I've, there's nothing wrong with bangers and mash. You know, it's a perfectly acceptable midweek meal. But you wouldn't go out on a Friday night to a restaurant and order mashed potato. Not unless you were touched, <laughs> really. Or, or you had some kind of pie and mash fetish. But equally, you go around to someone's house and they say, Vic, you like real ales, don't you? Yeah, I love real ales. I've got something for you. And they bring out a Badger's Golden Glory. And, I, and my heart just sinks. But not because there's anything <laughs> intrinsically horrendous and heinous about a Badger's beer, Golden Glory and others aside. It's just that, as I say, it's a gateway out. I'm looking for something a bit special. And you do open it and you do think, hmm, this is possibly, um, you know, I'm transported to a, um, an orchard. I'm transported to a summer orchard uh, with a, a hay wane somewhere in the background and I can sip this, sip this forever. But um, as you drink it, it's a perfectly acceptable beer, but I've got an issue with the word golden as well. Okay, why is that? It's just that it's overused and like you know, it's not quite light and it's certainly not dark. I know what we'll do. We'll call it golden. Okay. Why don't you call it something else like um, an ISA, an Indian summer ale? Yeah. 
Have you used your ISA allowance? Or, or peachy or glory. Peachy glory. <laughs> golden this, golden that. It's just, you know, come on, guys. You know, get your brewery heads working a little bit better. Okay, so if, if we had, had to ask you to give it a rating out of five, uh, which is what Mark mm. and I did on the show this week, okay. what, 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 what would you rate it as? Are we allowed halves? You are allowed halves, yeah. Since, since untapped... Um, that the untapped app started allowing people to use halves we've, we've, we've started using halves as well yeah I think I'm, I would struggle to give it more than a three okay maybe a three and a half so probably a little bit more gen- generous than, than we yeah, went with it did you we, did you we, we did went you uh, I think Mark went for a three because Mark Mark's quite a fan of the Golden Glory yeah um, I think I gave it a 2.5 because okay. for, for me it was just it got too sticky too quickly right um, and, and okay. I don't enjoy you that you were drinking it not wearing it I was, I was oh, drinking it fair enough. felt as though my mouth was getting all stuck fair enough that's all that's peach juice yes that is um, okay then um, so Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Vic Norman, who um, those of you that are joining us on the tour on the 14th of September will we'll get to meet and um, share the experience of the first uh, Beer O'Clock Show live with Dragon and Flagon Tours. If you want to book your places on it, um, you can book it at beeroclockshowlive.eventsbrite.co.uk. Um, we'll be putting that up on the Twitter feed for people to book it. Um, it's going to be a great day. Um, you'll get to meet Vic. You'll get to experience all those great pubs, drink some great beers, and probably most importantly of all, the best pork scratchings in, in London. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Vic. Thank uh, you. We'll see you in September. Looking forward to it. Um, thank you. Right, cheers.